So oh, the Super Bowl is set. We're officially one game away from the offseason, and I can't believe it, man. I can't believe it's not butter. But what is cool and what's going on? We got three rounds coming at you today, so let's get into this thing. In Chicago, well, I always call Marvin Harrison Jr. every single week. And this week, look, it is so tough, man. I, I don't know what to do. It just comes down to how much can you get for Justin Fields. That really, to me, is going to be the clincher. Obviously, you pick number one, so it's like, well, do we get Caleb Williams? Does he come in? And he's probably going to be just as good. Maybe it's Justin Fields and maybe better on a cheaper contract. So I understand that. Let's go get Carl Williams. No, I'm joking. Caleb Williams. Caleb. Carl Williams. I don't know. I don't know why I said that. But Caleb Williams, quarterback, USC, is going to be the pick here for the Chicago Bears, the number one overall selection. Let's go on to Drake May, quarterback, North Carolina. They go get themselves a quarterback as well. This was an easy decision. Go get the best available quarterback. Go grab one of those two guys. Or even Jaden Daniels. I know Mel Kuyper went Jaden Daniels. I'm not quite there yet, but I, I do like Jaden Daniels as well. And I think this will be a good situation no matter which quarterback lands here. On a two, the New England. Oh, I'm excited too who they bring in as head coach. I'll talk more about the Washington Commanders and some fits for potentially Ben Johnson coming in. You never know. On Or even Aaron Glenn. On to the New England Patriots. I'm going marvelous Marvin Harrison. He's a stud. I don't care about passing up on the quarterback. I mean, I get it. But at the same time, I just want foundational players on this New England Patriot roster. They need core pieces. And Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be that. This team has... When was the last time? I mean, they've been so long since they've had a true number one. And even Julian... I mean, Julian Edmund, Iron Man, was amazing. But, I mean, I wouldn't call him a true number one type of receiver. So I'd have to go back to the Randy Moss type of era for them until they've had a true number one. So I think Marvin Harrison Jr. gives you that core 10-year guy. On to the Arizona Cardinals. This is no consolation prize. Millie Neighbors is a stud, man. I can't other say it any other way. Like, the dude is amazing. He's got insane overall athleticism, smooth route running capabilities, a smooth operator. The dude is a, ph a phenomenal receiver. He's a, he's just going to be somebody that comes into this room, ends up being this team's number one receiver right away. I'm going to have that song stuck in my head now. But anyway, just go get a good receiver here. I, I think Malik Neighbors is 100% worth the top five pick. On to the Bolts here at number five. It's Super Bowers. Is that, I'm even matching with the, with the Chargers today. But yeah, I want to go get Super Bowers coming in here. I think this would be a phenomenal fit with Jim Harbaugh coming in here. You know he loves the run game, but you also love to use the tight ends. He's got Loveland. He's got A.J. Barner using both of those guys at a high level. Brock Bowers is going to be a phenomenal addition. Obviously not a just a base inline tight end. I think it's going to be a, phen a phenomenal weapon for Justin Herbert as well and somebody and I'm looking at this receiving core, and I feel like they've got their three receivers going in next year with Keenan Allen, Josh Palmer, and Quentin Johnson. So now you get a super weapon and that tight end hybrid position. Offense tackle is the other situation I did contemplate here, especially an alt or a Fashanu. But since Pipkins is under contract, I mean, it's not going to stop me, but it did kind of stop me technically. On to the G-Men. Yeah, I know. It's boring. I'm going Romo Dunze, but a Dunze is a good receiver. Now, I wouldn't say that I, even when I do a what I would do mock draft, which I probably need to do that actually here really soon. I don't know. I, I, Dunze, I don't know if I have him as a top five type of pick. And this is borderline top five. He is a really good receiver. Like, I think he's going to be a borderline one. I don't know if he's going to be a true number one, but I think he's going to be a very good receiver. And that's what the Giants need. Like, I think he can be a thousand yard receiver. And that's something the Giants haven't had since Odell Beckham days. So, Aroma Dunze, to me, it I get it. It may not be the, the sexy pick here. Or you say you don't get the quarterback. Or, I mean, even offensive line. But I think they'll give Evan Neal another chance. And you get a free agent. That's what I would do. I think they need interior offensive line in the draft on one of those day two picks, which we'll look at here soon. So we're going to stick with Romo Dunes, a Washington receiver. Let's go on to the Tennessee. Sorry if I'm talking a little funny. I got a little cold. I'm going on here. It's the change of season and stuff. So I'm sounding a little weird. I sound like a, uh, I don't know. But anyway, Olufashanu, tackle. This is booked in stone. There is literally a stone statue of one of these tackles out there in LAC right now. I'm sure there is. I'm going the pass protecting version though, Olaf Ashana, because since Brian Callahan coming in, maybe, you know, and all Joe Alt's a good pass protector as well. But maybe Fashanu, maybe a little more of a fit there with the way they might go more pass heavy. On to Jaden Daniels, another one that I mock over and over again. Atlanta, please. This is a perfect scenario. And I say this. Quarterbacks need to go to the right situation. I think the Giants, I think the New England Patriots, they need to build a roster. So I don't want to put a quarterback into every single team. I think Atlanta is souped up and ready to go. Like, they got a couple of more pieces they need to add on offense and defense. But overall, you put Jane Daniels, I think this can be a competitive team right away, similar like 
what Houston looks like this season and overall we'll see but it's always coaching too. see what they get as a head coach on to the Chicago Bears back on the clock I'm going edge rusher I'm going Dallas Turner I'm gonna go get some juice off the edge to pair along with Montez Sweat and I do think Dallas Turner will probably be the first edge off the board especially with the age a lot of teams are gonna look at he's 21 years old comparative to verse who's 23 and Liatu who's 23 going on 24 so both of those guys I think their tapes better but Dallas Turner's got good tape too and somebody that's gonna come in here and give them some more pass rush in that bear front get it nastalled up nasty all up on to the New York Jets number two 10, Joe Old, another one that's written in stone. There is a statue in New York as well. They just got to go ahead and get a tackle, please. I don't care which tack. Well, I do actually. I would love Alt, Fashanu, or Mims, or Latham. I like Latham too, but get one of those guys. Please, New York, please, please. On to Byron Murphy, interior defensive line, hook em horns. I'm taking an interior player who I think Byron Murphy is an absolute stud. And whether it's edge or interior defensive line, it's going to come down to free agency. I'm going to project that Daniel Hunter does come back, whether it's a franchise tag or a contract extension. More than likely, I think he gets hit up with an extension for this Vikings team, especially with what he means to that team. So I'm going to go grab a pass rusher on the inside because their in, in, interior looked dreadful. <laughs> it's really been bad. So I'm going to go grab an interior pass rusher here, Byron Murphy. Then on to the Denver Broncos here. I'm going Jared Verse. Now he is off the board. And get. I feel like the the Denver Broncos could go in so many different routes. Obviously, quarterback will get talked about. Until we know more on the rust situation, I'm going to keep kind of switching it up and doing different things. But for now, we'll go ahead and, and grab Jared Verse here, pass for sure, because I talk about it. I don't know if they have a true number one guy. Like you got some good rotational players, and Jonathan Cooper, Nick Benito, and Baron Brown are like all contributors. But Jared Verse, I think, gets you that next level, next gear pass for sure. On to Amarius Mims. It's going to be this pick for the Raiders, and they get themselves a stud right tackle. Man, I'm a huge Amarius Mims fan. I think he's worth a top 10 pick. The dude is so immensely strong and powerful and athletic for his size. Yes, please sign me up. Put him at the right tackle. Move through Aaron Munford inside the guard spot. Greg Van Roten and Jermaine Illuminor are both free agents. Actually, Andre James is also a free agent. I think they'll re-sign him, but ultimately, we're going to we're gonna get some more offense line help for the Raiders. On to the Saints, another one that I do all the time. It's J.C. Latham, and it gets my offense line pretty self-explanatory. you got to protect your quarterback, and also, I do think Ramchek, with the injury concern, you need to start thinking about that long-term. Latham plays guard early on. Hopefully, Ramchek is ready to go next season, but if not, Latham steps in right away at the right tackle position. On to the Indianapolis Colts. One of my favorite players in this class of the receiver position, A.D. Mitchell, A.D.I. Mitchell. Dude is a stud. He moves so well at his size. I just feel like he's going to translate to the next level really well. He gives me some C.D. Lamb, George Pickens type of vibes. Huge, huge fan. If I can't say it enough, I am. I just love A.D. Mitchell. So he's going to come in here for the Colts, give them another weapon to go along with Michael Pittman Jr. and Josh Downs. And that's just, that's too much, man. I'm excited for the Colts offense there. Talasi Fulag, it was a luxury pick, but anyway. Talasi Fulag here to the Seattle Seahawks. Offensive guard, another self-explanatory pick. He could also be a swing tackle for them. Some view him as strictly, I mean, they'll say he's a tackle, but I like him a lot inside a guard. But I definitely do think he can play tackle. And this team, they've had a lot of injuries. So I wouldn't mind getting a guy who can kick outside to tackle in a pinch, but ultimately fills one of those guard positions. Especially if you lose Damian Lewis, you're going to have to fill a void there. And Anthony Burr, Edford, we'll see if he can come along too, but you figure on him and Fulag as your long-term guards. All right, two, number 17, Brian Thomas, wide receiver, LSU. Self-explanatory, one that I do all the time. They need a receiver on the outside. Brian Thomas, he's got an elite upside, man. He's just got to improve his hands, and I think he can get there. On to the Bengals. I'm going Tyler Guyton. Smooth, super athletic. He's got so much upside. This Tyler Guyton could be one of the best tackles in the class when it's all said and done. If you can develop him correctly, I, I wouldn't be shocked if they he says if, if any, he's left tackle or right tackle either. Whoever It depends on which team gets him. But ultimately, Tyler Guyton's athleticism stands out to me. It's some of the best in this class. And I can't wait to see him at the Senior Bowl here coming up very, very soon. But Guyton comes in right away at that right tackle position, gives them an immediate upgrade. I mean, Jonah Williams, not bad. But, I, you know, $16 million is what he could be paid. And they got some other, you know, needs. You got other people to pay on this roster, such as T. Higgins. On to the Los Angeles Rams. I'm going corner. I'm going Nate Wiggins. Fine. 
finally a quarterback cornerback is off the board you're saying oh i got some we got some geese coming around here they're flying right over anyway nate wiggins speaking of flying we need a good lockdown secondary player nate wiggins is going to be addressing that in this secondary on to the Pittsburgh Steelers, Jerzon Johnny. Here is Johnny Newton coming to this team. Look, this was BPA. I get it. It might not be the biggest need for this team, but the way I look at it, Cameron Award is getting older now, and, and I don't think he's going to be able to play a full-time starter role going forward. And, you know, he's going to be 35 next season. And, I mean, he's still really good. It's just in Ogunjobi, Ogunjobi, I don't know if they're going to be able to keep him long-term. So you got, you got a new defensive line of Keanu Benton, Johnny Newton, Maybe keep Armin Watts as some depth for you on your defensive line. And that's a nice, solid steel front. On to Terry on Arnold. This was also just BPA, in my opinion. Terry and Arnold. Well, corner may not be their biggest need right now. The Dolphins are in a bit of cap problems. Let's just put it that way. So they may have to move on from Xavier Howard or Jalen Ramsey, or at least at some point. So Terry and Arnold, Cam Smith is kind of the future duo. And Cam Smith, hopefully we'll see more out of him next year, at least utilized. But I think Terry and Arnold has so much upside to be a true number one corner with his athletic profile and, and, and run toughness too. And then we go on to Cooper DeGene, self-explanatory for the Eagles. A lot of these first round picks are self-explanatory. It gets really interesting. Hopefully it gets interesting in the second, third rounds. But Cooper DeGene, cornerback, versatile corner. You can put him in the slot put him outside just put him in the secondary eagles are another team which is like we need secondary please give us a corner type of thing i mean not everybody i know a lot of eagles fans go get a tackler or an edge rusher that's kind of what it is but i think they need secondary on to kool-aid mckistry this was another situation where it's bpa i think that mckistry especially look steven nelson's a free agent also to thomas a free agent so you get yourself a pairing with Derek stingley on the outside i love it man i really do i think that's an elite cornerback combination on the outside for D'Amico ryan's then we go on to keon coleman receiver Florida State going to the Dallas Cowboys. They could get themselves a weapon there on the outside. Get Dak another weapon because, look, Brandon Cooks likely, I mean, we'll see if they decide to bring him back. And then, obviously, Michael Gallup probably only going to be around one more season. With his contract, it is tough to get out of. So, ultimately, if they do cut somebody, I would imagine it would be Brandon Cooks. Keon Coleman would come in there right away on the outside. On to Jackson Power. Johnson. Johnson is going to be the pick here. And I'm going to go take a sin. That was overly dramatic. But I'm going to take him. Here. Hey, we can't be too overly dramatic. There's no such thing. This is a mock draft, man. I love mock drafts. Uh, Jackson Powers Johnson, though, on the interior of the defense, or on this interior offensive line. He could even play guard for them because... You still do have Josh Myers. Okay, maybe move Myers inside to guard. It's possible. But somebody will play right guard. Somebody will play center. I, but I view Powers Johnson as the long-term center for this team. And then Leatu Latu, edge rusher, too good not to take at this point for the Bucs. And the Bucs could use another pass rusher. While their interior is really, really good, I think they could still use some much-needed help on the outside. I mean, Yaya Diaby is definitely a guy that's going to be a, a player that it sticks around on this roster. And then Joe Tryon, we'll see if he gets paid or not. He's been, you know, okay. I wouldn't say Tryon's been amazing or anything like that. Shaq's been really good still. Like, he's still a really good pass rusher. Ultimately, though, he's getting older. You need to think about the future there. So I'm going Leatu. Again, one of those situations where it's just like BP. I can't pass up on Leatu at this point. I need to get the medical red flags, which is the only reason he drops, in my opinion. I think he's a top 15 player in the class very easily. On to Kamari Lasner. And this is, oh, dude, I'm a huge fan of Lastner. I really, I don't know what it is about Lastner, but I feel like he's just going to be a stud corner as he develops. Maybe not right away. I don't know if he's going to be an immediate impact for a team, but I do think he's going to be a really, really good corner. I think he's just, it's going to be a matter of time. I love his ferociousness that he plays with, especially at his side. Somebody that comes in here gives them a number one corner, and that's something that this team does not have right now is some true help in the secondary. Let's go into Xavier Worthy, receiver Buffalo, Let's go get some speed, man. Let's speed kills, man. This in this case, if you're worthy, Josh Allen. This is like the Zay Flowers pick of last year for the Baltimore Ravens. Honestly, that's kind of what this is for the Buffalo Bills. So I'm going to go try to see if we can emulate that with Xavier Worthy. On to the Detroit Lions. I'm, oh, is that a tough, tough loss, man? It was a really tough one, man. But anyway, it was a good season for Detroit. I'm going Chop Robinson here. We're going to bring the Florida State. Oh, 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 Chop Robinson to the Detroit Lions in the Motor City. And he is going to chop his way with Aiden Hutchinson. What a beastly combination. Him and James Houston, too, when he gets back fully healthy next season. He was only, you know, a limited snap count. But 
Yes, Chop Robinson is going to come in here. I thought about cornerback, but with Kamari Lassner, a lot of the cornerbacks coming off the board. I said, let's go and wait. I feel like there's some good cornerbacks still available we can find later on, even though cornerback might be their biggest need at the moment. On to or into your defense line. Still need another pass rusher there. Baltimore Ravens. I'm going Kingsley Suamatea. Offensive line. I see him playing guard early on and then long-term tackle for this team. Especially Morgan Moses under contract for one more year. Ronnie Stanley injuries and stuff like that you may have to think about him for the future as well so Kingsley Sumatea slides into one of those guard positions day one and with his power and movement skills yes yes sir I'm, I'm lining that up man I'm still surprised they didn't run the ball more but any which way Kingsley Sumatea help continue building that offensive line keeping that a priority Xavier Leggett receiver going to the Kansas City Chiefs are you surprised but South Carolina receiver I, that's another guy that I'm much higher on I would say than consensus I think Xavier Leggett is going to be an absolute stud at the next level I know the one knock on him is the late one year breakout type of thing and that's the only thing that kind of scares me a little bit he didn't get his opportunities I think the dude is super talented immense size immense frame great speed and somebody that I, I think can separate too at a high level so Xavier Leggett going to be this team's outside receiver. On to the 49ers. I'm going Graham Barton, versatile offense alignment. Plugs in the guard early on, gives them some swing ability across this offense line. They didn't think about a tackle here, but it's like, you know, a little unsure if Jordan Morgan or Patrick Paul can play right tackle. Those are questions, you know, I, I haven't asked them. I need to give them a call or something. Hey, Graham, can you, I mean, uh, you know, Jordan Morgan or Patrick Paul, can you play right tackle? Overall, Graham Barton, really good offensive line prospect. Then we go on to the second round, Lad McConkie. He is going to be a stud wide receiver for this Carolina Panthers team. And I think he is a perfect fit for Bryce Young. He's going to be able to get open quick. Give him that Amon Ross St. Brown type. I mean, he's a different player, but I'm just saying he can be that for this Carolina Panther offense team. On to the New England Patriots back on the clock. I'm going off as a tackle. I'm going Jordan Morgan to be that left tackle of the future for them. They need help on this roster as I talk about. And I don't want they need a quarterback. I get it. It's tough, man. But I just don't want to put a rookie quarterback in this situation. You got free agency. They do have a lot of money. So we'll see what they decide to do. But Morgan to me was BPA. On to Tavondre Sweat, interior defensive line from Texas, the big monster. He solidifies a really leaky run, defeat, run defense, and I know, making puns there, but any which way, they need some help on that interior defensive line. Tavondre Sweat is a mammoth monster beast run defender and will just take up blocks. On to Braylon Trice, edge rusher from Washington, going to Washington, but yeah, across the border, man. Oh, Washington, Washington. What? <laughs> anyway, we're going to get ourselves a nice pass rusher, self explanatory here for the commanders. Then we go on to the Chargers, Enos Rakestraw Jr., cornerback help for this team, because, yeah, I mean, this, other than Asante Samuel, they need help. And Enos is better in run support. I wouldn't say he's the best run support corner, but he's really physical, especially at his size. I am impressed watching him, and he's got really good movement skills and coverage. Ability. And then on to the Tennessee Titans, their second round pick. I'm going Quinion Mitchell, the Toledo Rocket. The Rockets, but oh man, I love the Rockets. Anyway, which way I'm going Quinion Mitchell, more more cornerback hill because other than uh, their, you know, Roger McQuarrie, McQuarrie, it's it's a little bleak. And, you know, we'll see what they do if they bring back Sean Murphy Bunting. Either, either which way, I still think they need cornerback help. I, I'm more than like Christian Fulton's going to walk. So getting another outside corner here, Quinion Mitchell is going to be my selection. We go on to Troy Fatanu, offensive line. He plays left tackle at Washington. I think he moves inside, especially with, you know, ultimately the size. And also, you know, he did struggle out on island at times, getting beat on inside moves. So Fatanu going to play guard. I think limit some of those mistakes. I love the aggressive hands. I think he has some of the best hand placement in this draft class. And we're sticking with the Washington players for this New York Giant team. Protect your quarterback, Daniel Jones. Just give him that full shot, that full opportunity. He gets one opportunity now. On to the commanders, Patrick Paul, left tackle of the future. Slide him into guard, fill that left guard void right away. Now, I know he's a, he's a big dude to play left guard, but hey, I'm going to, uh, Drake May is a tall guy, so he should be able to see over Patrick Paul. You put him in at left guard, long term left tackle for Charles Leno. On to the Green Bay Packers, Tyler Newman, the one that I do all the time, so I'm sorry, but they need a safety. Tarnell Savage probably could be back, especially with the way he played this season. But you pair him along with Newbin and you roll. On to Michael Bennix Jr. 
quarterback, Washington. They get themselves their quarterback here and somebody that's going to be able to lead this Minnesota Viking team to the promised land. Let's hope so, man. I think Penix Jr., though, in this offense is a perfect scheme fit. You get your pass rusher on your defensive line, and then you get quarterback in the second round, Michael Penix Jr., Maybe Minnesota has to trade up back into the back end of the first round to get Michael Penix Jr. At least that's kind of what I'm looking at. But I really would love this fit here for Minnesota. You get cheaper at the quarterback position as well, which allows you to re-sign guys like Daniel Hunter and bring in a pass rusher or whatever and free agency too and some other needs. On to Troy Franklin to the Atlanta Falcons receiver, deep threat, and you add another weapon in for Jaden Daniels. Just make sure that he's got all the tools. You got Drake London, Kyle Pitts, Troy Franklin, hopefully a B. John Robinson and Tyler Algier. That's a great, solid offense to build around. Good offensive line. Hopefully, this is everything you need. On to the Raiders. I'm going quarterback Bo Nix here. Once again, I'm a little lower on Bo Nix. I like Bo Nix. I think he's a really good quarterback. I just see him more as like a Derek Carr you know, Andy Dalton, you know, in that mold type of quarterback who can be, you know, maybe Kirk Cousins is upside type of thing. I just don't know if I see an elite top tier quarterback. So that's just me, but he's a very, very good quarterback. He's going to be a nice quarterback that comes in right away and gives you a, a, somebody that can lead a team to the, you know, the playoffs and, and give you a competitive roster season in season out, especially if you have a competitive roster. On to the New Orleans Saints. I'm taking a quarterback as well. Quarterbacks are running now in the second round. J.J. McCarthy. I am a huge fan of McCarthy. I'll just say that right now. But McCarthy needs to sit. He needs to sit for ideally a season or two. Okay? So McCarthy, let him sit behind Derek Carr for at least one season, especially with that contract. More than likely, Carr is going to be the quarterback, and that's fine. This team still has some work to do in general. So McCarthy is a long-term viable option at the quarterback position. The Wolverine on to the Indianapolis Colts. I'm taking a safety. I was looking at quarterback two here. However, I felt like Cam Kitchens was the best available. So that's the way I went here. Cam Kitchens, they just need secondary help in general. So, And Blockman's a, a free agent. And, and even if they bring him back, I think they could still use some more help in that back end. So uh, Ronnie Thomas, not a bad safety or nothing. You know, but let's go ahead and get some more secondary help. I think they need a ball hawk back there. So Cam Kitchens is going to help them out much needed. On to the New York Giants back on the clock. I'm going with Chris Braswell, edge rusher, Alabama. Get them some more depth, right? I mean, Aziz Ojolari is a good, solid, pa you know, pass rushing specialist, but they definitely need some more help. And Braswell is a good run defender too, so he can play those early downs, especially for this team. On and give him much needed depth. On to the Jags, Michael Hall Jr., one of my guys in this class. I'm a huge fan of Michael Hall. I think he's being underrated a lot, but you know, you're not seeing him go this high, so I get it. You miss, woo, it seems a little high, but I, I don't. I think he's going to go in the second round, and and somebody that gives you a much needed pass rusher on that interior defense line for the Jaguars, which to me was lackluster a lot for them at times this season let's go on to the Bengals. i'm going leonard taylor the third and i'm gonna go leonard taylor the third i like to say that's cool actually but anyway leonard taylor is going to be somebody that gets them that bj uh hill type of replacement down the line right i mean you got dj reader who's a, under contract or he's a uh, free agent this season bj hill's a free agent in 2025 leonard taylor may be a bit of a developmental project but i see him in the future mold with so much upside, right? It's it's kind of like a Miles Murphy pick here to me in the second round and it's BPA. So I'm going to address that into your defensive line. On to Edrin Cooper, linebacker, self-explanatory for the Eagles. Got to get linebacker help, whether it's free agency, the draft, whatever. They need a leader that can stick around for more than just one season. You know what I mean? They keep bringing in one-year placements and stuff like Get a linebacker for the future, man. Edrin Cooper has all the upside to be that dude. On to Javon Bullard. Pittsburgh Steelers fans just hate me. I understand why, but man, I, I just, he's BPA and I can't, you know, I couldn't force an offensive line pick here. So I said, let's go Javon Bullard to pair along with Minka Fitzpatrick. Bullard's a great player, man. He's so instinctual and somebody that comes in and just, he's one of those dudes that you just know he's going to be Mr. Reliable in the back end. And that's what I'm getting here. So Minka Fitzpatrick and Bullard, I think, give you that one-two punch that is an elite duo and safeties, man, are under, uh, safeties are really important to have. Uh, KZ had a bit of a step back year for them, but I think Bullard will be that deep safety. Minka can be that, you know, all around safety for this team. So let's go on to the Los Angeles Rams. Darius Robinson, another guy that I believe is so underrated. Every time I watch his tape, man, I'm like, dude, how is this guy not being talked about as a second round pick? He is a phenomenal edge prospect 
or he plays like five tech and also off the edge too for the Minnesota uh, or for Minnesota for the Missouri Turpins. But yes, he has really improved his handwork this season and he makes plays in run defense like consistently game in game out <laughs> it's just like dude flashes he's got good initial burst too off the line and i see him very much in that michael hoyt role for this rams team as that strong side edge rusher on to the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, back on the, I almost said the New Orleans Saints. I don't know why. I don't know how I mix those teams up, but Adissa Isaac, Ed Rusher here, giving them that Josh Sweat, uh, Brandon Graham type of developmental guy because Graham and also um, Sweat are both free agents in 2025. So Isaac ends up being that developmental piece and has all the upside. Just like Josh Sweat, I think he can be a very similar mold to him. Let's go on to the Browns. They're taking a defensive interior player, Makai Wingo. Him and Mason Smith are both really good players. Both dealt with the injuries, man. But I, I'm telling you, these guys are studs. And I, I think they're both being underrated in draft class as well. Makai Wingo is such a great first step. Low center of gravity. The dude is just... I don't think he's going to be a, a 10 sack guy. I don't think he's got elite upside or nothing like that, but he is going to be a good football player and he's going to be a good football player for a very, very long time. I think he's just, he's one of those dudes, man, like Jarrell Casey vibes. Let's go on to Corinne Amagaji, offensive tackle from Yale. Can't wait to see him in the senior bowl. The, 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 the length, the arm length, I've been watching some tape on him lately and he has tremendous arm length. He's got tremendous size in general. He's thin, okay? I think he needs to bulk up, especially versus NFL competition. That might be a bit more of an issue. He does a good job getting to his anchor and his hop step, but I do think that the anchor could be tested for stronger edge rushers at the next level. But I do think he could slide into guard early on first, maybe for the Dolphins, slide at the left guard position and fill that void and be the swing tackle for Taron Armstead. So, and then long-term left tackle for this team. He's got a lot of upside. I'll just say that right now. I mean, he's got a great, like I said, an NFL build that you love. On to the Dallas Cowboys. I'm going offense line here for them too. I'm going Cooper BB. He's just a, a bad mother. You know what I'm saying? Like he's one of those dudes where you just, you know, he is going to maul dudes in the run game. Yes, he's not the most athletic guy or anything like that, but he is just going to kick your, you know what I'm saying? I keep beep, beep, beep. I got to um, calm down, G-Sling, calm down. It's okay. But that's, he is just an absolute brute and somebody that, Plugs in that left guard position. Tyler Smith moves in to left tackle and moves over to left tackle. If you don't bring uh, Terrence Smith, Teron Smith. To the Bucks back on the clock here. I'm going Christian Haynes, offensive guard, right guard there at UConn. And he is somebody like the Bucks still need to approve their interior offensive line. We're going to see steps of Hades from what I've heard at center. So I want to see how he plays there because this team could also use the center help. Robert Hainsey, maybe, but you could also try him at guard. Like, they just need interior help. So getting either a left guard or a setter for the future, I'm not going to bank on um, Ryan Jensen playing too much longer. I mean, he is under contract, so we'll see. Hopefully he gets healthy. But Christian Haynes helps him out on that interior of the offensive line. Back attack, back on the clock. I'm going Kalen King, cornerback from Penn State. Get themselves some cornerback help here. Kalen King, just a really athletic corner. Had a bad season, but I do think the talent is stale there with Kalen King. We'll see where he goes. He's going to be a, a big-time fluctuation guy, and I think the combine will be big for him in general. So watch out for Kalen King. I think the spectrum on him, because his tape was not good this year, could be all over the place. The talent, though, is still there. On to Mason Smith, interior of the defensive line, going to Houston. Much needed improvement there for them. And you pair him along with Millie Collins for a season. Millie Collins, also free agent in 2025. So no matter what, they need interior defensive line help. Mason Smith helps fill some of that void there. Chris Smith, interior defensive lineman from Michigan, the Wolverine. Also a need for Buffalo Bills. If they lose Daquan Jones, you get a pairing to go along with Ed Oliver. He's a good run defender, Ed Oliver, with a great pass rush ability that he has. Give yourself that one-two punch on the interior of the defensive line. Even if you bring back Daquan Jones, they could still use some more help. I mean, Tim Settle is more of a depth piece, so and I think he's a free agent too. On to the Detroit Lions. Now we're going corner. I'm going TJ Tampa, Iowa State. He's got great size, great length, and good physical physicality as well. So give him a little bit more physicality on the outside. TJ Tampa, an improvement in the secondary. On to Jalen Polk, receiver, Baltimore. If it's clear, if anything, they need another weapon on the outside. Jalen Polk is going to be that addition, the Washington receiver. And then we go on to McKinley Jackson, Texas A&M interior player. He has got a great first step as well. 
and another one of those dudes that I know he's just going to be a really, really good football player. He may not be a high-level pass rusher, but he's going to stop the run. If you look at this Chiefs team, even though Baltimore Ravens didn't really run on them the whole time, I, you know, one weakness in this Chiefs team is against the run. So let's get some more help on that interior of the defensive line. McKinley Jackson is going to really help you out there. On to the 49ers. I'm going Brandon Darless. They also go interior defensive line. Thought about cornerback quite a bit, but I still love the depth of the cornerback position. I didn't love the depth of the defensive tackle position, so I said, let's go to Oregon. Let's go get an interior pass rusher. Ark Armstead is a free agent in 2025. And you know... They love them trenches. On to the third round, Cedric Van Pran, center, slash could even play guard for them in a pinch, I feel like. So you put Cedric Van Pran on this offense line. Bradley Boozman, they need better protection there. Now, Van Pran is a little bit more of a developmental project in my eyes, but he's got great movement skills and has a lot of upside. And we go back to George. I don't know. It is what it is. They need to improve the offense line. You got to protect Bryce Young. I'll just say that right now. On to Peyton Wilson. Wilson! And where are you, Wilson? But we're going to go get the North Carolina State linebacker. A lot of upside, man. He's just got to stay healthy. Arizona Cardinals, they need a, a, a leader at that, that little middle linebacker position. I think Peyton Wilson can be that guy. Let's go on to Jatavian Sanders. Washington get themselves a tight end replacement for Logan Thomas. Another weapon for Drake May. On to the New England Patriots, Jonah Ellis. This team needs some more pass rush depth in general right now. Plus, Josh Uchi is a free agent. Matthew Judon is getting older. Jonah Ellis, a lot of upside, man. He needs to get stronger. But he has a lot of juice off the edge and a lot of a high, high motor that just does. He doesn't quit, man. On to Blake Corum. Yes, I know we're doing the cop out. But Jim Harbaugh, go get, go get a familiar face, Blake Corum, to be the running back for this team. And self-explanatory here. Blake Corum is a beast. Let's go on to DJ James, cornerback Auburn, a guy that I believe is underrated. DJ James is a exceptional cornerback, really fluid mover. He's more physical than his size would depict. And for the Giants, they still need some secondary help. So you pair him on with Deontay Banks on the outside and the Cordell Flott in the slot. On to the Arizona Cardinals here at 71. I'm going Blake Fisher. Huge fan of Blake Fisher. I mean, he didn't have the consistency this season. There's still some things he got to work on. But I think he's got all the tools, man. And, and he's got some good technical ability with his hands. It's just a matter of putting the time in. And I gave him a second-round grade, actually, in the offseason. I believe he truly is a, a really good talent. But he ends up being the long-term right tackle for this team. Paris Johnson moves over to the left tackle position. The New York Jets here at 72. I decided to go receivers. Think about interior defense line quite a bit. But I went ahead and go after Jermaine Burton here. Really good route runner. And I think he's somebody that also has got really good speed, but much needed help in this receiving core room. It's a desperate need for the Jets. I'll just say that right now. On to the Detroit Lions. I'm going receiver as well. I'm going Brandon Rice, Jerry Rice's son. He's going to give them that outside receiver, especially if Josh Reynolds isn't bad. I mean, I think they'll bring him back still. I know he had a bad game, but ultimately he still had a good season. Brandon Rice, though, gives him another weapon because, I mean, J-Mo is a bit more of a gadget guy at the moment. He had a heck of a game, though, with, you know, that jet sweep running as a running back. Dude, is a monster. I'll just say that. But Brandon Rice gives him another outside receiver. Let's go on to Austin Booker. This is a guy that will be talked about very, very soon. Kansas edge rusher. So here's the deal on him. Let me give you the breakdown real quick in, in like two words. El explosiveness. In size, length. Okay, that was three words. Okay, I apologize. I'm lying. Liar, liar. It was me, but it was me. I love that scene. But anyway, he's got a great explosive first step. And the dude has the size profile that you look for from an edge rusher. If he can build out his frame, get stronger, this guy could legit be a top edge rusher in the NFL. He just needs some development and some time. But ultimately, took a swing here. Why not? And I feel like Austin Booker should get a get some more, you know, out there. Should start. We should start talking about him a little bit more. On to Zach Frazier, center from West Virginia. Another guy that's a really good player. If it weren't for the the leg injury at the end of the season, I think he'd be more towards that top of the third, end of the second type of pick. Really good prospect. He comes in for this Bears team. Hopefully healthy right away. But if not, you know, you also could look at free agency, get some help there. But long term center, Zach Frazier. Frazier, on to the Denver Broncos. I'm going quarterback Spencer Rattler. I'm also really high on Spencer Rattler. A guy I don't think that is talked about enough. We'll see him at the Senior Bowl, how he looks there. But he comes in, gives them that Russell Wilson competition. And we'll see how the ball gets rolling with Spencer Rattler. Let's go on to Max Melton. 
One of my favorite cornerback prospects in this class, the Raiders, go ahead and snag him here. I think he is really a smooth corner. He's explosive at coming downhill and in run support. He's a special team guru, and he just gives you some more help in that cornerback room, which is not bad by any stretch. They just don't have a true number one corner. But Max Milton, definitely, I'm not saying he's going to be a true number one corner or nothing, but I think he does have a lot of upside for sure. Let's go on to Kitten Oladapo, another underrated player that we're going to see at the Senior Bowl. I think he's going to be a big-time riser. He's got great size. He's got decent enough athleticism. He's really strong as a tackler. And somebody for the Seahawks team that Jamal Adams, I don't know how much longer he's going to be on this team. And also, you got to think about Quandre Diggs. Could he be a cap cut? So multiple things there. They value their secondary. Kitten Oladapo comes in here and helps them out quite a bit. Oregon State back-to-back -back as well there. On to Rook Oro -ro -ro. your boat gently down the street. I, I love this, man. I love Rook Oro. -ro. He's a good player, too. and He's a really athletic player. He's another one that just needs to build out his frame a little more, get stronger at the point of attack, be more consistent, but he's got that explosiveness. Teams that love stunts as well are going to love Rook Oro -ro -ro with his speed and athleticism. So you get yourself another pass rusher, and you got to think for the future, Grady Jarrett getting older, um, yeah, David Onyemata is getting older. Clayus Campbell, we'll see if he's back up. He was used also as like a, a base 4-3 end when, you know, in certain packages and stuff like that. Overall, get some more interior defense line youth. Next up, Trey Benson. Second running back off the board. Benson, break tackle machine. Bengals, go ahead and take your chance on a running back. And I talked about that. We're trying to run the ball a little bit more, too, for this Bengals team. So, uh, Guyton's a great run blocker, too, at the second level. He's, he's one of the best, actually. Anyway, Benson comes in as that running back replacement for Joe Mixon. Let's go on to Jeremiah Trotter Jr., another just BPA approach for, for the Seahawks team. I feel like Jeremiah Trotter Jr., yes, he doesn't have elite size, but what he makes up for with, with the lack of size is the instincts and, and overall just ability to diagnose plays and be able to be on time with things. You know what I'm saying? Like the dude is what you need at the linebacker position. He's not the fastest guy. He's not the biggest guy. There will be some limitations there. Overall, he knows where to diagnose and to key where things are happening at the right times. And he's a great coverage linebacker. So, and yeah, going with Jeremiah Trotter to be this team is help with Jaden Jordan Brooks for the future. We go on to Chris Abrams drain cornerback from Missouri, Indianapolis Colts with Kenny Moore being a free agent. Maybe they bring him back. Maybe they don't. Who knows? But Chris Abrams drain could even play on the outside. I feel like, especially in this scheme, especially with how much zone they play, he could be in the slot too. So you figure a long-term slot for them with Kenny Moore getting older. On to the Los Angeles Rams here. I'm going safety. I feel like they could use another play, especially if you let go of Jordan Fuller, which I think they'll bring him back. But any which way, you pair along Fuller with Hicks. I think it'd be a really nice combination. Hicks is a really athletic guy for his size, being six foot two, 215 pounds. He's a good mover and somebody that I think can be a really nice pairing along there with a Fuller. Pittsburgh Steelers, yes, I'm not going offensive line still, but you got free agency, you got to fill those voids, man. And then whatever, you know, rosters. But I just, I felt like Jalen McMillan was the best available player here. I'm a huge fan of Jalen McMillan too. I, I believe he's a second round type of pick in my eyes. I love his route running capability. He just gets open consistently. And I think he was, you know, Romo Dunze is a, a great receiver and whatnot, but I almost feel like McMillan was kind of the rock at times for this team too. Like when he was on the field, I like him better than Jalen Polk too. But overall, McMillan, Odunze, they're both really good receivers. But I think McMillan's a steal here. Whoever gets him right now being projected in the third round comes in into the slot right away for this team, giving you that Deontay Johnson future replacement because they're probably going to look to move on from him at some point. On to the Cleveland Browns here. I'm going running back, Audric Estime, actually one of the youngest players in this entire draft class. But Estime, so powerful, man. He's got great vision. Good runner, good just pure runner. And I, I see him as like that Nick Chubb replacement. This is where it's a tough conversation because I do think there's going to be a conversation to be had, especially for the Browns and their cap situation. They may have to move on from Nick Chubb, especially coming off that injury. I mean, I still would keep Nick Chubb if possible, but at the end of the day, it is something they're going to have to think about for the future. And, you know, Jerome Ford is not a bad back, but I think Estime would be really helpful, especially for their identity still being a run team. Let's go on to Ricky Pearsall, the wide receiver from Florida. Gumming and giving them a slot weapon, Tank Dell and Nico Collins on the outside, Ricky Pearsall in the slot, and John Mechie as well. So that's kind of another duo. Everyone keeps asking me for receiver, and, uh, you know, I also think they could use another weapon. too. They've, they've hit on so many weapons in the third round, so I'm going back to the third round for this Houston Texan team. Let's go on to Junior Colson. He is a phenomenal linebacker, and, again, another, uh, kind of a thin linebacking class. 
Colson comes in, gives him that leader at the linebacker position, which is obviously a weakness for this Cowboys team, especially a reared at his head at the end of the season in the playoffs. On to Braylon Allen, running back to the Green Bay Packers, Wisconsin, close to home. They're going to be maybe scouting this guy extra close. He's actually, I think, the youngest player in this draft class. He just turned 20 years old. But Braylon Allen, super powerful, got good speed for his size especially. It is in a similar mold to like an A.J. Dillon. I mean, there is some comps going to be thrown around with A.J. Dillon, but with A.J. Dillon being a free agent, and, you know, it is what it is. Keep an eye on some dudes like uh, Jonathan Brooks here could be an option. Uh, Kamani Vidal is a really good player, too. I think he's going to start rising up boards dramatically soon. That dude is a stud. Somebody, it, it was, uh, I forget his name. Sorry, but you turned me on to him, and he's amazing. So shout out to you. But, yeah, he's an absolute stud. On to the Bucks' last pick here in the third round. I'm going with Bo Braid. He's a really good player, man. I think he'd be a nice combo, too, with Antoine Winfield. Like, these guys are interchangeable, but I think Braid put him in, the, you know, like in the box, too, a lot. He's really, really good in the flats. He can play over top. He's just a really smart safety. I saw him make a ton of plays. Every time I watch Maryland tape, the dude was making plays. Antoine Winfield, super versatile. You can put him in the slot, play him in the box, put him up top. These two guys would be a really nice combination. Let's go on to Sione Vaki here, running back slash safety extraordinaire, and maybe be your long-term Buda Baker replacement. Got to think about that. They've got a club option on him. We'll see if they decide to keep him or not. Let's go on to James Williams. He's a projection, okay? He's going to be a guy that we're going to see big time at the Senior Bowl. Lots of upside. He's got a tremendous length, a tremendous size, obviously being a five-star prospect. He's got good solid speed, especially for a linebacker. I think he'll be way better in that category, but he is a developmental guy. I think he struggles in tackling in space. But if you put not like as a, you know, if you don't put him as like the last line of defense, I think he'll be a lot better in regards. You put him at that linebacker position and him and Quay Walker can be your future at the linebacker position. Let's go on to Christian Mahogany here. Offensive guard for the Detroit Lions. They need a guard to fill in for Loti Valtai. Also, Graham Glasgow's a free agent. So Mahogany with his brute force comes in at that right guard position. Now we go on to Kaitlin Carson, cornerback, Wake Forest, getting them some more secondary help. Brandon Stevens under contract for one more season. So Carson gives you some much needed help there on the outside. The parameter. Speaking of cornerback, Josh Newton, he comes in and gives you some also some help there. I do think that uh, Legere Snee will either get hit with the tag or get re-signed, so I'm not worried about that. You obviously have McDuffie, but who's that third corner that's reliable? I mean, you got Joshua Williams, you got um, with Jalen Williams as well. Pardon me, I'm blanking on his name, but Josh Newton gives you some more help there in that cornerback position. You can also play in the slot, too. I think you play outside or in the slot. On to Kamal Hayden, cornerback, Tennessee. He's an underrated player as well. Somebody that I think has got good size, good length, solid athlete, really physical, man, at the catch point as well. And it comes in here, gives them some depth at the cornerback position because I do think that is one of their weaknesses on the 49ers right now is the lack of depth in the cornerback position. So Kamal Hayden, especially with all their cornerbacks being free agents basically in 2025. Let's go on to Naramiah Pritchett. Really smooth. He's another smooth operator, man. Really good athletic corner. Not the biggest or anything like that. And, you know, run support could be a big of a question for him. But I, I think that overall, the dude's coverage skills are really, really good. Could also play in the slot, too. Let's go on to the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm going Jonathan Brooks, running back. The big, the big red flag with him is the injuries. But he's a guy that has tremendous upside. And, and the, the Philadelphia Eagles, they need a number one running back. It's been, it's finally time, right? I think they need to go out, get their running back here. And, and the value on the running back position in this third round just makes too much sense for me. Jonathan Brooks, an immediate upgrade for them. Hopefully is ready to go right away. That's the only said you worry about. He may not be able to be ready until midseason. Let's go on to Malachi Corley, San Francisco. Going to go get that Debo Samuel clone. Comps are going to be wild out there, but we're going to see him at the Senior Bowl. We need to see if he can run routes at a high level because a lot of his stuff is just get him the ball in, you know, with screens and slots, stuff like that. I want to see him run routes. Like, that'll be the big thing. If he can run routes really at a high level, we're talking second round type of ability. But for right now, I'm going to keep the keep it cool, keep it on the down low. Malachi Corley, give him some more receiver help. Juwan uh, Johnson is also a free agent. Kalen Bullock, sa safety, USC, coming to the Buffalo Bills. He's very thin. That's the big question with Kalen Bullock is can he tackle at a high level? But for the Buffalo Bills, getting themselves a safety for the future, Kalen Bullock does have a tremendous amount of upside with his athleticism and ball hawking ability. Final pick of this three-round mock draft. 
Bucky Irvin. I got to finish it out with dramatic. My voice is going, but anyway, Bucky Irvin, if it is Ben Johnson, man, this would be a fun combination with him and Brian Robinson. Oh man, you go get your slasher in here. Bucky Irvin can be, uh, you know, just a fun pick here. You add another weapon too into this offense. So that is going to conclude this three round mock draft. Let me know what you think. Where do you disagree on it? I'm sure, you know, hey, hit me up. I don't mind. You know, you got to hit me, hit me hard. Hit me where it hurts. I made some bad picks. I'm sure I did, but uh, that's, uh, that's this going to conclude it. I hope you guys have a really cool in day and take it easy.